couple of weeks ago, I did a YouTube poll and I asked a question. It was based upon the Simon and Garfunkel song, Scarborough Fair. You know, Scarborough Fair, Are You Going to Scarborough Fair, Parsley Sage, Rosemary and Thyme. I thought, which is your favorite? The winner was... The winner was Rosemary. <clears throat> One of my favorites. I've actually done a couple of uh, videos on Rosemary. Go ahead and search back or, well, look up there. There might be one or two up there. But I'm looking at my garden. I had some beautiful Rosemary growing. Uh, actually, all those pictures that you saw of the herbs, my garden. Everything's growing great except for my basil. First things first, I needed to need to wash my uh, rosemary. Um, just water, that's all it needs. I don't have any uh, bad nasty stuff growing or anything like that, but you know, the occasional bug, whatever. Okay, first thing I'm gonna make. You've probably seen those cheeses. They uh, start with a B and rhyme with raisin. Yeah, I'm gonna make something very similar to that. But mine's gonna be heavy on rosemary, of course. The star of our show. First thing I gotta do, I gotta chop up some rosemary. I might as well do a lot of it because well, I'm gonna use it later. Trust me, it smells incredible in here, this fresh rosemary. Okay, first thing that goes in, I got 10 and a half ounces of goat cheese. We're gonna throw in the star of our show, rosemary. Probably a good healthy tablespoon. Need some salt. Quarter of a teaspoon. Now, pepper, white pepper. Now I'm going to kind of offend some people. I'm going to use garlic, granulated garlic. Trust me, I've made this a couple of times, many times before. And raw garlic is great, but this actually comes out a little bit better. So I'm going to use about a teaspoon. And I'm going to need a little cream, just to, enough to get it started. I may have to add more to smooth it out. We'll see. Um, I recommend uh, mechanical. Consistency, perfect. I want this more of a dip than as a semi soft cheese or a really soft cheese. Oh, let's give this a taste. Perfect. Now the rosemary is going to come out a little bit more as it sits. And we're going to let it sit for a bit. The next item that plays very, very nicely with rosemary is Potatoes. Now, you can do a lot of things with potatoes, but to tell you the truth, sitting at home, cooking up steak, I like roasting them. So I'm just gonna quarter these lengthwise, make these nice little wedges. So I got about three quarters of a pound, but it's enough for me. Oh, you probably noticed that my pan's missing. I wonder where it could have gone. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. So let's get some seasoning on these. And of course, rosemary. 
Now I've got like baby Yukon golds or golden potatoes. So I got salt, black pepper, olive oil. How much? I don't know, about that much. Whatever looks good. Let's give these a toss. Now we just have to wait for that old girl to warm up and we can get these potatoes in. Okay, the pan's hot. Let's get these in the oven. Next item. I love glazed carrots, don't you? How could you not? And I've got these carrots here, beautiful. But I think I need to peel them first. So the only problem I see with these carrots is they're a little long. So I'm going to cut them down just a bit. That way they fit in the pan. So glazing is kind of a two-step procedure. Oh, by the way, the potatoes probably about 30 to 40 minutes at 450. They should be fine. So glazing is kind of a two-step process here, or for me at least. First, they need to be, let's say braised, then glazed. Now you could steam these off, you could boil them, you could whatever. We're gonna kind of boil them a bit. So we'll get them in the pan. Get a little heat there. And I'm gonna throw in some chicken stock. And we're gonna let them cook until, well, either one of two things have happened. The chicken stock spoiled off, then we may add more, or they're done. Well, we're gonna cook them until they're done anyways, but we wanna make sure that, the, uh, that there's plenty of chicken stock, so I'm gonna be testing those throughout. But while they're going, we need to get some flavor in there Guess what we're gonna put in? You guessed it, rosemary. Ah, uh, pepper. And some salt too. Our carrots are nice and soft. Now they add a few more things into it. We've got to glaze it now. We've cooked them, now time to glaze. Throw in a little bit of butter. And honey. Now you can use brown sugar, you can use agave nectar, whatever you have handy. I like honey. And we'll let that cook down to a nice glaze. Okay, we got a nice glaze there. That's about as far as I trust going with it. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and keep it warm until, well, my last item is done. And, well, and the potatoes too. The final piece of today's puzzle is, yes, a tenderloin. Yes, I did butcher this myself. Go look up there. So, first thing, we got to season that, of course. 
a little salt, pepper, both sides. Now we're just going to sear this off. But I'm also going to show you a technique. This technique is the technique you see um, whenever they show like these fancy Dan chefs and they're always, you know, cooking something. They're always doing this basting technique. It is so simple. Let's show you. Now, unfortunately, basting doesn't work very well on induction cooktop, which we cook the carrots on, or the electric behind me. So, I gotta break out this camp stove. Get a little bit of oil down. Bring our pan up to temperature. And then we're gonna add in our steak. Big thing with this is to control the temperature. You want it hot, but you don't want it too hot because we're going to add some things in there that could burn. So you want it hot enough to sear, but not too hot to burn things. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because it's searing nicely. And now let's get on to the basting. First things first, butter. I got about three tablespoons. Some garlic thrown in there is nice. And we might as well throw in a sprig of our rosemary. You want to tilt your pan and then just spoon the butter over top of the herbs and the steak. Be careful, flame can get hot. But you see how that's cooking the steak on that top? It's exactly what we want. The smell of that butter hitting that rosemary is just incredible. Let's check the other side. Not too bad. You can go a little bit longer on that side. There we go. Okay, let's get our potatoes out. Now let's put a nice little pile right here. Come in with our glazed carrots. Lean them up right there. Rosemary glazed carrots, that is. And then finally, our beautiful steak. Put it right there. You know what would be good with this though? How about Hey, I'm Chef Terry. This is my tribute to Rosemary. Yeah, I double dip. I'm gonna eat it all. See you next week.